Hello, wonderful people. Today, we're going to be looking at how we can send emails in Symphony 7. Right, let's jump in. So first of all, we need to configure MailPit. Um, if, actually, if we head over to the Docker um, desktop setup, uh, remember we had that um, override inside the composer uh, compose override and in there is the mailer um, so in here we have um, nothing really um, but we can click here and it will take us to our mailer setup but obviously this is not set up so we need to head over to the project and then we go to our dot uh, emv dot local and then in here we can add in the sm smpt forward slash mailer and here we can use 1025 as the port so we can uncomment this this doesn't look right s p okay dokie and the mailer is simply referencing the mailer um, service inside of there. Next, what we need to do is create an email service. So inside of our service uh, directory, we can say uh, email uh, service, like so, and then create the, the file. Okay, so this will be a final uh, class. And inside of here, we can define, uh, for example, emails that we want to send. So for example, um, welcome email. Um, so you'd send this um, when a user uh, signs up. Um, so we'll need another one in here. Um, and this will actually be a private function, which will be called um, send and now in here we need the constructor and we'll need ooh, private read only and the mailer interface mailer like so and then in here we can have a try catch statement um, where we'll say this mailer send and then this is expecting a raw message um, and an envelope okay cool and then here we can have the catch which will be an exception and it will be a um, mailer uh, was it transport interface exception I think or transport oh, not translator trans transport exception there we go, that's the one we want. Um, and here we can do throw new ex throw exception, like so. Okay, so now inside of the welcome email, we can create the actual email. Um, so we'll just say email equals new. Uh, templated email like so and here we can now say um, from um, and what I would like what I'd like to do here is create a const um, so you can define and make this a private constant by the way um, and it will be a string and here it's going to be um, application email address equals um, something at example.com like so and then we can use this here self um, oh, maybe I've got the wrong cannot use expression maybe I have the wrong um, I can't type it at the moment because I don't have the correct version it would seem um, or maybe it's on the other side 
Nope. Ah, oh, that's annoying. Oh well. It's uh, part of, um, I think, PHP 3, uh, 8.3, um, where you can type the constants, but for some reason it's not working. So, oh well, let's move on. Um, so email two, and now here we'll need an email address. So we can say string email address, like so. And this will actually return a uh, templated email like that and then we can pass in the email address like so and then email uh, template and you can pass in the template here so we're going to say um, email um, welcome .html .twig like so and here you should uh, no it's not in there actually sorry it's here uh, context um, which would be an array so in here we can say uh, context and it will be an empty array in the beginning and we need to type it as an array like so and then just pass it into the context so what this means is we can access uh, or pass in the context outside of this in a controller or in a service or wherever we're sending the email from. Um, let's create the uh, template like so. There we go. Um, so now we have that created. We can modify it later. And what else do we need to do? Um, we need to return the email like that. Okie dokie. So now templated email, email send email and that should do the trick I think we need to add in a ah there we go that was the one I was actually looking for that's rather annoying um, is the transport exception interface okay so There we go, and is it gonna, it wants me to add a PHP block, there we go, okay, good. Don't like having those errors, uh, we can add void. There we go, great. I just realized um, we didn't actually send the, um, the email, um, so we need to send that, um, so we need to pass in the email like so. Um, okay, so now the question is how can we use this in our code. Next, we need to send an email. So if we head over to our event controller, um, and in here we can inject via the constructor the email service, like so. And then here we can say this email service, welcome email. And we need the email address. So we can just pass in for the for the sake of argument at the moment, we'll just pass in a uh, temporary email address. So we say um, amazing user at example.com. And what else do we need to pass in? The context. Um, so the context we're going to pass in here is a username. And we'll call that username uh, crazy Bob because why not? Right, so now you may have noticed that we're passing in the context, but inside of here, we haven't actually configured anything inside of our um, template. But before we do that, let's send the email. So if we head over to our application and we refresh, there we go. Um, it says that we have a email queued um, and the reason it's queued and it's not showing up inside of our uh, mail pit is because this is working on top of the transport messenger messenger interface or in the component rather. So what we need to do is head over to our Docker setup 
and inside of our PHP container, we need to run consume. Um, and I can never remember the actual um, command for this type of stuff, so I always just copy and paste it. <laughs> um, so hit enter. Um, and here we're going to be using the uh, async uh, consume command. So just hit enter again. And there we go. So now, ah, there we go. We can see we have an email already inside of our mail pit. So if we click on it, we can see there is nothing in it. Now let's go over to the template and fix this. So we're passing in um, some context. Uh, we, we're passing in the username, so we need to remember that. Um, but we also need to create something that's going to handle this nicely. Um, so we'll create an email base.html.twig file. And for, before we were not going to copy that, what we're going to do is we're going to head over to foundation um, emails, like so. And foundation emails is essentially just some CSS for your emails um, so that they will be displayed nicely and prettily. Um, and it's a bit of a cheat, but it works quite well. Um, so we will download the getting started. Um, so download foundation for emails, there we go. And this boilerplate, this is what we need. So we'll copy that and paste it inside of our email base. And inside of here, we can actually get rid of that. And we'll create another block called CSS. Um, and we will close that block. And then inside of the center, we'll create another block. And we'll call that body. Um, end block. There we go. And we can get rid of all these um, comments. We don't need them. So as you can see, this path is not correct. Um, so we need to pull in the foundation email, uh, the foundation CSS rather. So I shall head over to my downloads. So in here we can grab the foundations emails CSS. We'll copy both of them and we will put them inside of our public uh, CSS and paste them in there and add them to the git. There we go. And here we go. So now what we can do is inside of here we can create an absolute URL and then inside of there we can create an asset and then we can say um, what was the path that it was looking for, sorry? I forgot, it was foundation emails CSS. Okay, we can actually just keep that to the side and then copy it from here. Um, like so, there we go. Excellent. You might be wondering why we have this CSS block here, because when we create a um, email, we can pass in some CSS that needs to be loaded in um, if we need to customize it inside of the individual email. Right, okay, so head over to the welcome um, and we can say extends, whoops, so daisy extends, email base. And then inside of here, you can say block CSS, end block. And then here you can say block body, and end block. Now, on the foundation website, if we head back, we can go to email templates. And this provides a quite a useful um, reference. The only problem is, is they make you download it rather than being able to see the actual HTML, which is a bit, a bit annoying. Um, yeah, it redirects you to this, but oh well. You know, it's not the end of the world. So if we just copy that and paste it in here, um, 
we can actually get rid of this and pop it inside of our CSS block like so. Now what we'll do here is we'll, we'll just keep all this stuff uh, just for now and we'll pass in the user name um, context that we defined inside of the send email. Right, so now if we go, what we'll do actually is just to make sure that our CSS is working, um, let's see, where are we? Uh, buh, 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 buh. Uh, yes, there we go. So we have an image here. So what we'll do is we'll say image tag um, and we will say, um, we'll actually just copy this border here um, like so. And then we'll say border radius 50% uh, like that. Um, excellent. Okay. So now if we head back to our application and we hit enter again, we've sent an email, we have a new email, or oh, we have two new emails actually. <laughs> and let's see, aha, okay. Now this is something that will happen to you a lot. Um, what's actually happening here is it's still got the old version because it's cached it. Um, so what we need to do is just go back over here and restart the consumer. Um, so just copy that and hit enter, and hit enter again. Now, if I just get rid of this one too, if I refresh again, we should get another email coming in. There we go. And this time it should have everything we need. Excellent. So we can see that the CSS has been applied and everything is dandy. Um, there's some small issues with the display as we get, we're getting a 93% hit rate on the uh, compatibility. Um, so that's good. But it, you can customize this to your heart's content. And this is how we can send emails in Symphony 7.